Now, it would be very easy for me to come out here and give you the kind of news that you would like to hear, but I'm not going to do that because I've got some bad news. Gamers really confuse me. Wait, wait. I shouldn't say gamers. I should say gaming fanboys. I mean, wow. This is the only industry I know where people will defend millionaires for a subpar product. All right, so those of you who follow me on Twitter know that I'm, I'm kind of put off by something right now. And if you're not following me on Twitter, I highly recommend you do, even though I don't tweet all that much. But, uh, you know, it's just, a, it's just a nice thing to do. Go ahead and give your boy a follow. But um, the new Pokemon games, all right, let's, um, let's start there. Let's talk about them, because at least on YouTube, I haven't expressed any particular opinion one way or the other. Uh, mostly because I just don't really care about the new Pokemon games enough to make videos about them. I think they're just spin-offs being marketed as main series games by Nintendo because that's, to be fair, a really smart and reasonable business strategy. Um, is it a bit underhanded? Especially when those are like the first Pokemon uh, Switch games to come out? Yes, but at least they're being transparent with the idea that the, the quote-unquote hardcore games are going to be released in the in the following year so this is not all we're getting for pokemon switch and that's exactly what i'm sort of worried about as a consumer because one argument used by a lot of people defending this game's existence is that it's going to be a valuable test tool for both the new engine that will be used probably for the next pokemon game as well and some aesthetic features like the whole thing about uh, your Pokemon following you around like in Heart Gold Soul Silver. People have gone crazy over that. Uh, and that's kind of interesting because it really does come off like Pokemon Let's Go is a test to see how little effort Game Freak has to put into a game before veterans stop buying. What is the minimum amount of effort that Game Freak can put into a Pokemon game before the older than 12 demographic stops buying? And that's why I'm sort of skeptical about whether or not I would want to support this game. If you think this game's sales are not going to influence the development and the thought process, the creative thought process behind the 2019 game, that's pretty naive. And that's what I'm kind of worried about, is that we're going to be taken completely for granted if all of us veterans buy this game. And then Game Freak looks at, looks at that and just says, oh, well, we don't have to give a fuck anymore about the future games. They're just going to eat everything that we give them. But especially when I already don't have a Switch and I think the... Oh, boy, this is another... This is an actual hot take that's going to give me some fire from, I'm sure, the dislike bar in the comment section. But I, I don't like the Switch. I, I think it's just another fucking gimmick. Underpowered as shit. It couldn't even run Final Fantasy 15. That's why they didn't want to develop for it, and that's why they have the fucking shitty Pocket Edition instead. Um, Breath of the Wild struggles to get 30 frames per second uh, consistently. Absolute garbage system. I don't think I'll ever buy it unless Fire Emblem 16 is that amazing. Um, then I guess I would just have to swallow, um, <laughs> uh, you know, take the bullet there and buy the Switch because there is no Switch emulator that's functioning at the moment. The only reason I was able to play Breath of the Wild, as you guys might know, is because I ran it on Simu, which runs actually better than the Switch after it gets started up, which is just absolutely fucking sad. My build is not that old. All I did was get a new processor. I got a Ryzen 5 1500, um, and I'm, I got like 50 frames, frames per second on the uh, on Breath of the Wild. Absolutely ridiculous. Like I was getting 40 frames per second while fucking streaming. <sighs> Switch is terrible, <laughs> but that's not what this, what this video is about. So some people take it even further on the whole Let's Go thing, because a lot of people, I would say the majority of Pokemon fans, um, and I don't even agree with this stance, but I find it re I find it to be the reasonable um, stance, is that, you know, this, this Pokemon game, you know, it's not for the veterans, it's not for our demographic, we're not the target audience here. But when are we? But my argument to that is, you know, when are we ever the target audience? Have you played Sun and Moon and X and Y with all the coddling that they do in those games? We haven't been the target audience in a long time, and it's just going to get worse if we keep letting them take us for granted. And I understand that even if every single person in the older demographic had their voices heard, 
uh, made their feedback known. There's a good possibility Game Freak will just say, fuck you guys, we don't need you guys to make money. But... <sighs> You know, that's one thing, saying that, because it's probably true. But then it's another to just be like this dude right here. You guys have been stare staring at his post for quite a while now. Um, <laughs> that is just so in denial about the new Pokemon games that he discourages people from giving legitimate feedback. He doesn't do so explicitly in the, o in the OP, but he does so in the thread, I can show you. And encouraging celebration of the game anyway simplified version of a series anyone can get into and enjoy that applies to like the first and second generation games and um i mean those games are already pretty accessible and easy and they don't feel the need to make it absolutely impossible for you to lose i mean it's like people forgot that the interesting thing about games is solving their problems it's like a big puzzle in a lot of situations and that's where the intrigue comes from it's not fun even for the most inexperienced of kids if they literally cannot lose in a game and that's almost what pokemon games have started to become and i feel like let's go is just going to take that and just put it onto steroids and that's why i don't feel like it's okay to discourage feedback for gaming devs and gaming companies even if in, even if at the end of the day you want to argue that they'll just say that our younger target audience that will always buy the games 100% is so large that we don't matter financially or business-wise, like, that's one argument. But saying that it is, uh, quote-unquote, broke to complain about Let's Go's mechanics, um, you know, that's just a whole nother level of absolute fucking damage-controlling shill that gets so under my skin and the thing i'm really worried about for you know the games that come after let's go i haven't really elaborated on this yet but it's the idea that if let's go is super successful with all of its simplified mechanics and only having the kanto pokemon and all of this and that um that that simplification and streamlining well that's not even streamlining really because that would be like that's like a positive thing that some games do um but all of that is going to bleed over into the Generation 8 games. And you are just naive if you think that wouldn't happen if Let's Go is explosively successful. Which there's a very good chance it will be because it's the first uh, Nintendo Switch Pokemon game. Uh, it already happened with Fire Emblem, for better or for worse. I mean, whether you like the whole uh, second generation child mechanics from Awakening, you have to accept that the success of Awakening meant that intelligent systems was incentivized to bleed over a lot of the mechanics that made awakening popular in fates and that's why fates has the child system and i think for gameplay the whole you know um the child unit mechanics are really cool but they didn't work with fates story or any of its context but they just fucking shoved it in anyway because it was it worked in awakening awakening saved the franchise so you gotta put it in fates I feel like that's the same thing that's going to happen to Pokemon, is that Let's Go is going to be really successful with all of its super simplified mechanics and Game Freak's just going to say, oh well if Let's Go was enough for the fans then we just we just make Gen 8 really similar to Let's Go. Maybe, maybe amp it up a little bit but not too much because we want to keep all of the buyers from Let's Go and not have them feel alienated by all these complex competitive mechanics. Now we can't have that, we gotta have, we gotta have sales. Or at least that's what I think would happen if I wasn't already aware of the existing feedback. So this is um, the reveal trailer that was posted onto the official Pokemon YouTube channel. Uh, go ahead and peep that dislike bar there a little bit. I even have mine there for good measure, man. <laughs> I'm a dickhead, I'm sorry. But um, it's not Metroid Prime Federation Forces or anything. It's not overwhelming, not even close. But it's like more than 1 in 10 people that say... I don't fuck with Pokemon Let's Go on first reveal. And the thing that's important about this kind of feedback is, you know, especially recently, um, Nintendo and other big corporations are making an effort to be more social media sensitive because they know that's where all of the most active consumers are. And this 29,000 dislikes is what's keeping them in check for the development of Gen 8. They're seeing this and they're saying, okay, yeah, we better make, we better make Gen 8 good to satisfy these fans. Because one out of ten of your most active consumers, that's not a 
that, that is not a small chunk of your player base. Uh, and I'm aware this is only for English speakers only, but I mean, English speakers make up a really good portion of the uh, Pokemon player base. Um, it's not like Pokemon is this obscure, like, Japan-only thing that has a niche market in the West. No, it's absolutely huge worldwide. So this matters. Don't try to tell me that it doesn't. And that's why I get so frustrated with people who try to discourage this kind of feedback. Because I would be sure that if 100% of the feedback to Let's Go was positive and then the game was a commercial success... The same thing that hap the same thing that happened to Fire Emblem would absolutely happen with Pokemon, and so that's why I just cannot stand people like this guy who insist on not only damage controlling but taking it further and saying that you're fucking wrong for complaining about what you get. You should just eat up everything Holy Game Freak feeds you. It doesn't fucking matter what you think or about being you know pro consumerism. Fuck that. Nintendo can just bend me over all night long and slurp my <laughs> slurp my soul straight from my booty hole. I don't care what they do to me. I will buy their product. Okay, the last thing I want to say before ending the video is that if you're planning on buying Pokemon Let's Go because you genuinely think that you would enjoy the game based on what you've seen, I just want to make it clear. I do not have beef with you. My beef is with people who are like strangely elitist about supporting the game and that are like the dude I showed in the thread who are like of the mindset that you're not allowed to complain about a game that doesn't appeal to you and that's the other thing if um you're like me and you're not sold on this game yet because another thing I want to make clear uh we don't know everything about this game yet for all I know it could surprise me so I'm reserving overall judgment but if you're not sold on this game yet and the game still doesn't sell you by the time it comes out don't fucking buy it. You don't have to buy it just because it's a Pokemon game. That's your right as a consumer. It doesn't make you suddenly not a fan if you don't buy it. And I don't know why... God damn, this is so bizarre that people actually still contest this in 2018. Uh, sit on the bench until the 2019 game if you don't think this game is your thing. Um, but for the people who do think it's their thing, by all means, buy the game and have fun with it. Um, yeah, this whole thing is just dumb. Um, right now, I'm not really seeing you with this game. I don't think it's for me. So I'm not buying it, and I'm sure as hell not buying a Switch for this game. Um, yeah, okay, I think I've said everything I wanted to right now. Um, I could make, like, another video detailing why I don't like the Switch in general, but I think Black Bond has a video that pretty much sums up every point I could have. I might link it in the description. Um, bye.